He has sattvic abhav, ecstatic symptoms in his body. And he can also realize some vyabhachari bhav, 33 types of transitory assisting emotions. Yet, in that stage of rati, in that stage of bhav, though he can realize these things to a limited degree, because of the karda sanskar, deep impression grace within his heart, he has not yet been able to experience how these five ingredients mix together to produce an astonishing flavor which is called rasa. So Srila Rupa Goswami part wrote, Vyatiti bhavana vartma yastama kara bharabhu kitesa tsunjule bharam swadhyatesa rasol mataha This is his definition of rasa. When there is a flood in the heart of the devotee, of Shuddha Sattva comes to a greater degree than at the stage of Rati. It comes more and his heart is flooded and illuminated with Vishuddha Sattva. At that time, then the five ingredients of Rasa, Stai Bhav, Vibhav, Anubhav, Sattvika Bhav and Vyabhachari Bhav, they mix together to produce an astonishing taste and that is called Bhakti Rasa. So, even great Vaishnavas the sadhaks who are doing progress in this world up to the stage of bhav, they cannot really hmm, taste the full experience of rasa. So on his morning walk this morning, Srila Gurudev said, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavitamati, that the consciousness which is completely absorbed in the mellows of love for Sri Krishna, whose consciousness is that? It is the consciousness of the eternal associates of Sri Krishna in the spiritual world. Mother Yashoda, Nanda Baba, Subal, Sri Dham, Dham, Basubhadam, the Gopis, Radhika, Lalita Vishaka and others, they are really Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavitamati. And if a practicing devotee in this world will hear from a realized Vaishnava about their glories, then what will happen? By their grace, a very intense greed may come in his heart. I would want, I want to serve Sri Krishna like those <coughs> eternal associates. So here, Sri Raya Ramananda is giving the explanation how the living entity has a chance to enter into spontaneous devotional service. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, Eho, I, this is okay, but go on, tell me more about the goal of life. So Raya Ramananda, he said that Dasya Bhakti Sarva Sadhyasa, the essence of all goals of life is Dasya Bhakti. And he gave an example. He quoted a verse that was spoken by Duravasa Rishi. When Duravasa Rishi saw the glories of Ambarish Maharaj, then he said, Yannama Suti Matrena, Guman Bhavati Nirmala, Tashatir Takata Kimba, Dasanam Mavasishate. If someone has become Das, really the servant of the Supreme Lord, then what is left for that person to attain? Why? Yanna ma sruti matrena. Bhagavan is such a person that simply by hearing the sound of his name, one's heart becomes completely purified. He is such a great personality that any place that is touched by his lotus feet, that place becomes a jirtha. What are the jirthas? Jirthas are the places that have been touched by his feet. So if a person can have such a qualified master, then what is left for them to attain uh, in their life? This is so such a wonderful thing. So then, he quoted a verse from... Oh, can you tell why here he left to Rasaj? Yes. Shantaras and Dattara. Oh, this is Dattara. He galloped up to Shantaras. Right. So, so, Srila Gurudev is raising a very important question to help us understand Chaitanya Taramita. You know that in Chaitanya Taramita, once when Brahmin came to Mahaprabhu's assembly, he wanted to read some poetry, but he had not heard properly and deeply from Vaishnavas, so there's some defect in his poetry. So he read it first of all to Swarup Damodar, who was the secretary of Mahaprabhu. He would check everyone's poetry. Because if Mahaprabhu heard anything where there was Siddhanta Virod, some wrong philosophy, or Rasa Bas, some defect in mellows, Mahaprabhu would be upset actually. So everything was checked by Sri Swarup Damodar. When Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami heard his poetry and saw the mistakes, he told him, 
If you want to understand the Srimad Bhagavatam, then you must take shelter of a pure Rasik Vaishnava and hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from them. Otherwise, simply by reading, you will not understand. So one day, Srila Gurudev said, Yes, it is stated, Yaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnava If you want to know the Bhagavatam, you will have to go to the lotus feet of a Vaishnava and hear from him. But Srila Gurudev added, Yaha Sri Chaitanya Charitam Rita Pade. If you want to read Sri Chaitanya Charitam then Raj Rasik Tatvavit Rupanuga Vaishnava Rastane. You have to go to such a qualified Vaishnava. So I think that without the guidance, the mercy, and the explanations of Srila Gurudev, very difficult for any of us to enter into Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Srila Gurudev is bringing up this point. Why did Raman and the Roy quickly go to Sakyarasa? He missed out Shantaras completely. He touched on Dasyaras, but Marku said, hey, this is okay, go on. And then Sri Raman and the Roy quoted a verse glorifying the Sakyaba friendship mood. Itam satam Brahma Sukana Bhutte Dasyam Gatanam Paradayana I'm coming to this. Oh, yeah. I tried to make a little bit of purpose. Don't be elaborate, but yes. because our. Yes. I'll, I'll come to the point. Here it is stated that, oh, some people, they think that they worship God and they just try to realize liberation. Brahma Sukh. Others, they think that God, being the Supreme Personality, they should become His servants. And they serve Him as their Supreme Lord. But they can, and others who are in Maya, they think, oh, Krishna is like an ordinary human being. But none of these can understand how some great personalities, like Subha, Sridhar, Madhu Mangal, Arjun Labanga, Stoka Krishna, and the, all the boys of Krishna, our boyfriends, they are playing with Him as their very dearest, most intimate friend. So when Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, not eho vaya, this is external, not eho hai, this is okay. He said, eho putam, this is excellent, this is an excellent thing. So why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say this? Srila Gurudev is raising this question. So first of all, in Vrindavan, in transcendental Vrindavan, there is no, uh, the Shantaras, it is dormant there. All the living entities there, they are serving from Dasyabhav up to Madhuryabhav. But in Vrindavan, even Dasyabhav is not Shuddha Dasya, pure Dasya, pure servitude. For example, you know Hanuman, he has Shuddha Dasya. He's always serving Lord Ramachandra in so many ways. But he knows that Lord Ramachandra is God. But in Vrindavan, there, no one thinks that Sri Krishna is God. They think that he's the son of Nanda Maharaj. So being the son of Nanda Maharaj, how will he have any servants? Nanda Baba has servants. And those servants of Nanda Maharaj, they also do some service for his son. But because they're the servants of Nanda Maharaj, their dasyubha, their servitude mood, may be mixed with some friendship, it may be mixed with some parental mood as well. So, because there is no overt shantaras in Vrindavan, and because the dasyubha, should the dasyubha is not present, then Mahaprabhu, he wanted to go beyond this, and he first gave his endorsement and his approval to the description of Sakharas. Because in Vrindavan, the frame is Vishramba, very, very intimate, and free from all sense of majesty, opulence, and reverence towards Nandalala, the son of Nanda Maharaj. Very good answer. <laughs> Sakharas, yes. then Parsakaras, and all. Why did Sri Chaitanya give his endorsement to the suggestion of Sakharasa? Because when love is free from all awe and reverence, then it's very pleasing to Sri Krishna. How the coward boys play with Sri Krishna is so wonderful. They never think that Krishna is God, or even that He is greater than them. 
Sometimes the boys get together in the forest and they wrestle together. Hmm? Sri Dham will say to Krishna, Hey Krishna, what kind of big man are you? You are not greater than me. You see, your father is Nanda Baba and he has 900,000 cows. And my father is Vrishupano Baba and he has 1,100,000 cows. So my father has more cows than your father, so I am more important than you. I am greater than you. Sometimes they will wrestle together. Sri Dham will defeat someone and then he's ready to take on any, any challenges. At that time, Sri Krishna tells the boys, stand back, stand back, and comes into the middle of the place where they're wrestling and says, oh, with my trunk, I scatter the clouds in the sky. I trumpet and strike fear into the hearts of everyone. Now, Sri Krishna, the formidable, undefeatable war elephant has entered the arena. Oh, Sri Dham, you timid deer, be ready to flee. <laughs> Krishna challenges Sri Dham to fight like this. Then when they fight, what happens? Sri Dham is the winner and puts Krishna down on the ground and holds him down. Then when Sri Dham gets up, he says, Jai Jai, I am the winner. Then Krishna gets up and says, Jai Jai, I am the winner. <laughs> Boys in Krishna, what are you doing? You are defeated? Krishna said, no, I am the winner. Do you know why? Because my nose was up and Sri Dham's nose was down. <laughs> I am the winner. So then the, the boys, they quarrel with each other, they take dust and they throw dust at Krishna and Krishna throws dust at them. So once, Durvasa Rishi, he was wandering here and there and on his travels, he came to Vrindavan. He had heard that the Supreme Cosmic Godhead plays like an ordinary child in Vrindavan. So Durvasa Rishi, coming to the forest, he saw the boys throwing dust on each other. So what is this? All the Vedas glorify the Supreme Cosmic Godhead. All the rishis offer prayers to him. But what is he doing here? He's throwing dust at his friends, they're throwing dust at him. He couldn't believe. How beautiful is this child? And the Vasa Rishi, just, he was stunned and he sat down. So then Sri Dham, he said, Oh, there's one Baba over there. He saw our fighting. He can decide who is the winner. So then Sri Dham and Krishna, their little boys, and they came over. Sri Dham said, Hey Baba, you tell him who the winner was. You say, hey, Baba, you saw everything, you tell him who the winner was. But this uh, Baba, he did not give any answer. So Krishna sat down in his lap. Sri Dham also sat, and they grabbed his beard, and they're pulling his beard. Hey, <laughs> tell him who the winner is. But he was stunned in ecstasy, he could not give an answer. Hmm? Krishna says, hey, Baba, give an answer, are you dead? Sri Dham pulled his beard, are you dumb? Hmm? Like this. But the Rasa, he was in ecstasy seeing the beauty of Sri Krishna. So just then, Krishna began to laugh, and the Vasa felt himself, oh, entering into the mouth of Krishna, and then he saw that he was in the causal ocean. Millions and millions of universes were there. He thought, I have to get back to Vrindavan, and he entered into a universe, but he could not get back. He came out, he went into another universe, and for millions of years, he was traveling from universe to universe. Lost. Then he heard again a laugh, and again, he came out and he was sitting in Vrindavan. And the two boys were there saying, Hey, this Baba doesn't know anything, let's go. And they went <laughs> to play. So, how astonishing is this Sakya Rasa? So, Chukadev Goswami uttered this verse, Itam Sakam Brahma Sukhana Bhutya. And when Mahaprabhu heard the glories of the friends of Sri Krishna, then he said, Eho Uttam, this is wonderful, but Adi Keoha, go further, tell me something more. Hmm? So then, Ramananda Roy, who was in ecstasy remembering the pastimes of Vrindavan, and he said, Nanda Kim Akarat Brahma, Shreyam Eva Mayo Daya. Oh, what austerities has Nanda Maharaj performed to be the father of Sri Krishna? And what great uh, pious activities did Mother Yashoda do in order to actually be the one who feeds her breast milk to the Supreme Personality of Godhead? So this verse was spoken uh, by uh, Parikshit Maharaj to Shukadev Goswami after he heard the Dham Bandhan Leela. He heard that Madhya Shoda, she has so much love for Krishna that when Krishna is naughty, she can take the rope from her hair and bind him. And now Krishna is bound and he cannot escape. How astonishing it is. No one ever did it before. Lord Shingadev has not been bound by anyone. 
Lord Ramandev was not being bound by anyone. Even Lord Ramachandra was never tied up by his mother. But the Supreme Personality in Godhead in Vrindavan becomes like a small baby. Even when he's a baby, he cannot roll over. He will cry, wah, wah. And his mother will have to roll him over. That Lord who saved the world in the form of Varaha Devan picked up the world on his tusk. That Lord who saved the world by killing Hiranyakashipu. That Lord who saved the world by destroying Ravana. Now in Vrindavan, as a baby, he cannot save himself from a mosquito. So if a mosquito will come, his, he will cry and his mother will protect him. So that very Krishna is playing in the arms of Madhya Shoda. She thinks, if I don't feed him, he will die. He who is feeding and maintaining the whole universe, she thinks I am maintaining him by my breast milk. He is my son. So hearing the glories of Madhya Yashoda, then Parishit Maharaj, he became astonished. He thought, how wonderful this is. What did she do in her previous life to attain this position? But this is really a rhetorical question because no one can do anything to become Madhya Yashoda. She is the eternal mother of Sri Krishna, and Nanda Baba is the eternal father. But he mentioned Nanda Baba first, and then Madhya Shoda, because though both of them, they have that Sanya praying, parental love, Madhya Shoda's love is even higher, even superior to the love of Nanda Maharaj. Now a question comes, if the love of the Kyavad boys is so wonderful, why did the Rama and the Rai then move on to the love of Madhya Shoda? The reason is this, all the types of relationship with Krishna, the various rasas, they have particular ingredients. In Shantarasa, there is Krishna Nishna. The mind is fixed on Krishna and Krishna Tyag, giving up all other objects. In Dasya Rasa, both of these elements are present, but there is also Mamata, a feeling of possessiveness, and also Seva, active service. So Dasaras has all the symptoms of Shantaras plus two more. Then in Sakuras has all the characteristics of Shanta, Dasya, plus an added one, and that is called Vishramba, or feelings of intimacy, feelings of equality. A servant always feels less than the master, but the friend feels equal. So the Sakuras friendship, that mood is higher. But Vatsarya Rasa? It has all the qualities of Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, and plus two more. One is Palan Potion, and the other one, Taran Bhartsan. Palan Potion means the spirit that I have to nourish Sri Krishna. I have to uh, maintain him. And Taran Bhartsan means I'll have to give him some discipline. Like Mani Shoda, she thought, if I don't tie up Krishna, and give him some discipline or punishment for his misbehavior. When he grows up, then I cannot say what might happen. He could become a dacoit even. So I should give him some discipline. Now the Cowlick boys, they'll never think in this way. Srila Gurudev gave a wonderful example. One day, Krishna and his friends, they were playing, they were very close to Nandagal, and enjoying wonderful games. Mother Yashoda, she told Rohini Maya, Oh Rohini, can you tell Krishna that he is the prasadam is ready, Nanda Baba is waiting, and he should come home and uh, honor prasad. So she sent Rohini to call him. So Rohini came out to where the boys were playing and said, Oh Krishna, Nanda Baba is waiting, your food is ready, please come at once. So Krishna was in the middle of playing with his boys, and he thought, Oh, I have to go. Then the boys said, Krishna, our game is just coming to the high point, to the best point. And if you leave right now, when our game is on the highest level, then we won't play with you tomorrow. Krishna became afraid. What should I do? But Rohini Maya is calling, my friends, they want me to continue to play. Hmm? The friends will not think, oh, Krishna has been playing so long, he became tired, he became hungry. Who will think that? Mothers will think like that. So then Krishna, he went back and played. And Rohini Maya returned and said, I called him, but he's not coming. So then Madhya showed up. All right, I'll do it. So then Madhya Shoda went out to where Sri Krishna was playing. And she said to Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna, now the evening is coming. And do you know who comes here in the evening? She said, no, Maya. He said, in the evening time, the owl will owl. 
comes here. Chris says, what? What is the Ao Bilao? <laughs> Mother Yashoda said, the Ao Bilao has big pointed teeth hmm? and ferocious eyes and pointed ears and covered in hair. Very ferocious. She Krishna said, Maya, can I play with the Ao Bilao? <laughs> But Yashoda said, no. You know what he does? He has a bag and he catches little boys like you and puts them in his bag and takes them away forever. He said, oh. Really? Then Mother Yashoda, she looked over Krishna's shoulder as if she saw something very frightening and she screamed. <gasps> and she turned and she ran. And Krishna was so frightened he didn't dare look behind. He said, hey, Maya, wait for me. And ran after his mother and came all the way home. Oh, that's all your rasa. The mood of a parent. I have to nourish him. I have to take Lord. care of him. Hold on, the Okay. So then, <laughs> so when Mahaprabhu heard the glories of that's all your rasa, he was very happy, and he said, "Hey, Ho Uttam, this is wonderful. But Agi Kehar, can you go a little further?" So then, Raman on the right. He also, his heart was also overflowing with more and more ecstasy. Remembering the pastimes of Vrindavan and going more and more towards the confidential pastimes. So, then, Ramanatha Rai, he thought, yes, there is a love that is even superior to Vatsalya Rasa. A love that includes all the ingredients of Shantaras, Dasaras, Sakras, Vatsalya Rasa, but eat an, another ingredient. And that level of love is called Madhurya Rasa or Sringa Rasa, the romantic mood. Kanta Bhava Dia, in this mood of a beloved, then the devotee even offers their body in the service of Krishna completely. And it has, it has also many other ingredients that are unimaginable for the devotees in the other Rasas. So then Ram and the Rai, he wanted to glorify the gopis of Vrindavan. So when he remembered them, he remembered a verse that had been spoken by Sri Uddhav. Sri Uddhav was sent by Krishna to Vrindavan, and there he saw the separation moods of the gopis, and especially of Srimati Radhika. And seeing this, having their association, he realized something of their glories, little, and he began to glorify them. So he said, Nayam Sri Anga Unatantara Sevasada Swayoshitam Nalina Gandarutam Kutamya Rasutsavasa Buja Danda Grinita Kanta Rabdari Shamya Udagaj Vaja Sundarinam Oh, the favor, the mercy that Sri Krishna has bestowed upon the gopis of Vrindavan was never attained by Lakshmi Devi. Vaksha Vilasini, Sri Lakshmi Devi, the eternal Shakti and consort of Lord Narayan, she did not attain the mercy that Sri Krishna has bestowed upon Vajgopis. Nayam Sri Anga, Unatantara Te Prashada, Swayoshitam. So if Lakshmi didn't attain it, then what to speak of Swayoshita, the ladies of the heavenly planets? who are so beautiful that the natural fragrance of their body, hmm, you know, if you don't clean the body, a bad fragrance comes. But they are so beautiful that the natural fragrance of their body is like lotus flowers. They are so beautiful. But they did not attain the mercy that the gopis attained. What to speak of the ladies of this material world who are beautiful in by ordinary standards, they cannot compare to heavenly demigods or Lakshmi Devi. It means that gopis are superior to all of these. What is the prasad that gopis attained? Here he says, Rasut Sabasha Bhuja Tanda Grinita Kanta Labdhati Sham Yapudakad Vipraja Sundarinam He said, at the time of Arasa Vila, Sri Krishna, he kept his arms on the, around the necks of Raj Gopis. So Udhav is very rasik. He does not want to say everything openly. But our acharyas and Srila Gurudev, very mercifully, they revealed something. Here, Buddha is saying that Krishna's arms, they are buja danda, they are like sticks. So sticks, dandas, they are straight. So what is the significance of this? It means 
that at the time of Raslila, when Sri Krishna was dancing together with Red Gopis, at that time, the music was so beautiful. But then Sri Krishna, he stopped dancing. There was something missing from that music. What? Oh, the sound of Radhika's ankle bell. One of her ankle bells had come off. So Sri Krishna, he stopped, and he was searching in the grass, and then he found, oh, I have found your new board. And then very lovingly, placed it on the lotus feet of Radhika. At the time of that Rasalila, when gopis become um, very, uh, they're covered in perspiration from dancing and singing so much, Sri Krishna himself takes his own pitambar and gently wipes the perspiration from their brow. He wipes the kumkum from their breast, and then with that red color, he colors his own heart to send a message to them <coughs> that your love has completely captivated my heart. And his arms are like dunder, they are straight. Why? Perhaps those of you who are parents have had the experience. If a child approaches you and comes in your lap and with straight arms goes like this, uh, hanging around your neck, what does it mean? It means, daddy, daddy, I want something. Hmm? You know? So when someone approaches you like this, it means they're begging, they're asking for something. So here Buddha is indirectly saying that during the rest of the life, Sri Krishna went to Brajagopis, put his arms like this around their necks, and in a very humble mood, he confessed to them, Oh my dear gopis of Vrindavan, I disappeared from you. Please forgive me, but I beg you, never disappear from me, because without you, I cannot stay alive. Did anyone, did Sri Krishna ever say this to anyone? No, only to Braj gopis. So in this way, Sri Uddhavji, he glorified the intense power of their love to control the heart of Sri Krishna. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, Eho Uttam, this is great, but can you, Aki KR, can you go a little further? Then Ramananda writing. He thought, yes, I have glorified the general love of all the gopis, but out of all the gopis, one of them is supermost. So then Sri Ramananda Rai, he said, Yatharadha Priya Vishnus Tasukundam Priyam Tata. Sarva Gopi Shu Sai Vaika Vishnu Akyam Tavalabha Anaya Radhi Tonunam Bhagavan Hari Ishwara Yanobi Haya Govinda Prito Yam Anaya Graha This verse Anaya Radhi Tanunam is from Srimad Bhagavatam. During the Rasalila, Sri Krishna uh, was dancing with all gopis. When Radhwani saw this, then Mani came, a contrary mood, and in a hush she left Raslila. And when Sri Krishna noticed that she had gone, he did not want to dance with others. And he also left. And he caught up with her. And the two of them walked through the forest. And they came to Sringarabhat. And there Sri Krishna firstly decorated the hair of Radhika with flowers. In the meantime, the other gopis were searching everywhere. Where is Krishna? And they came across some footprints. And they followed them. And they saw that next to Sri Krishna's footprints, there were the footprints of some gopi, one individual gopi. At that time, the gopi said, Anila Radhito Nunam Bhagavan Hari Kishwara. How astonishing it is that this particular gopi must have worshipped Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord. Why? Because if someone worships the Supreme Lord, then all one's desires can be fulfilled. So by worshipping the Supreme Lord, her desire to play alone with that coward boy, Sri Krishna, that desire was fulfilled. So there's so much Madhurya sweetness in this verse. They were astonishing. How is it? She must be so special. She must be so wonderful that Sri Krishna, leaving all of us, prefers to be alone with her. How wonderful this is. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, This is good, but I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and the doubt is this that when Sri Krishna left the Rasalila with Radhika, he did it secretly. He did not do it in front of everyone. So I think that it could be that when he took Radharani alone, at that time, in his heart, he still had some feeling for another gopi. And so he took her away secretly so that that other gopi would not feel hurt. So this hero is called Dakshinya Nayaka. The Dakshinya Nayak is the hero who has love for one heroine, but still maintains very sweet feelings in his heart for another, and thinks of her when he meets with another one. The sincere heroine, the hero. So Mahaprabhu thought, oh, it may 
may be that Krishna took Radhika alone, but he still may have more love for someone else. And this could be evidenced by the fact that they disappeared secretly, in secret. So then Ramana and the right, he had to refute this and really pr prove conclusively, once and for all, that Radhika is the greatest sweetheart of Sri Krishna and that she fully controls him. So he quoted a verse from Sri Git Govinda, Kamsari Apisamsara. In this description of Git Govinda, in this description of Git Govinda, Sri Krishna was sitting amongst so many gopis of Vrindavan and Radhika came, saw him and from a distance she left. And there and then, in the presence of all Braj Gopis, Sri Krishna got up and left them all and went to meet with, she tried to find Radhika, but he could not find her. And so, Rai Ramananda, he quoted another verse describing when Sri Krishna was unable to find Radhika, he sat down in the kunj and began to cry. Srila Bhakti no Thakur explained the same lila in his song. Shaka Koti Gopi Madhavaman Rakite Narilo Kori Jatan. Hundreds of thousands of gopis, they tried to please Krishna and make him happy, but he could not be satisfied. And he left them all to search out Radhika. And being unable to find Radhika, he sat alone in the kunj and he was weeping. So what does it mean? Srila Gurudev gave a very beautiful explanation. He said that when wind, you know wind? Have you ever seen wind? No one is there. You cannot see wind. What do you see? When a tornado comes, you cannot see the wind. You only see the damage that it does. It uproots trees, it takes the roofs off the houses, it overturns everything. So similarly, it is impossible to describe the, the greatness and the, the, the depth and the beauty of Radhika's love. There are not words fully to describe that. But here Ramananda Rai is saying that just as you cannot see the wind, but you can see the effect that the wind has, so similarly, you cannot fully describe the love of Radhika, but you can see the effect that it has on the heart of Sri Krishna. That he would prefer to be alone with his memories, not even with Radhika. Krishna would prefer to be alone with his memories of Radhika than to be with thousands and thousands of millions of other gopis. So what a wonderful glorification of Radhika's praying Sri Ramananda Rai has expressed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, more? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in brief, brief. Gurdjieff saying, I can care a lot. Very brief. Yes. So then, after that, Sri Roy Ramananda, he began to explain to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about the Sarup of Srimati Radhika. Radhika is Mahabhav Swarupini, the embodiment of Mahabhav. She is not of her flesh and blood like people of this world. She's made of transcendental loving emotions for Sri Krishna. Everything from head to toe. Not only her form, her cloth, her ornaments, everything. So Sri Roy Ramananda began to describe the Vigraha, the Sri Vigraha, Shimati Radhika. How her skirt it is not made of silk or polyester or anything. It is made of lajja, her shyness. Her choli, her shirt, is her modesty. The red, the red cosmetic on her lips, this is her rag, her attachment for Sri Krishna. Her earrings, they don't think they are just silver and gold, they are made of barb. What barb? The lobe, the greed to hear about the name, form, qualities and pastimes of Sri Krishna. Radhika's suru is decorated with astasaphic bars, eight types of transcendental ecstasy, up to the point of sudipta. And her behavior is decorated with bingsati bhav alankars, 20 types of ecstatic emotional ornaments, such as hav, bhav, hela, shoba, dipti, kanti, avdarya, madhurya, dalit, vichiti, vilas, vibram, hila, kinshit, and so on. Very astonishing things. Without uh, taking shelter of the Ujwala Nilamani of Srila Rupa Goswami it's impossible to enter into these mysteries. Mahaprabhu heard all these things. He said, go on, go on. And then Ramananda Rai said, no one ever asked me to go further than this before. <laughs> but you are asking. So then Roy Ramananda, he said, there is one more subject I have not described. It is called praying the last virata. Then Mahaprabhu took his hand and covered his mouth. 
But when Mahaprabhu took his hand away, Raramananda began to sing. Pahile raga nayana bonga vela, Chiradina bonila, Abadina gila, Nasu Ramana nahama ramani, Dui mano mano bhava veshna jani, Radha. Radhaya Bhavatasta Chita Jatanisway Dhavi Lapya Kramat. He described how Radhika was speaking. She said, When Krishna first looked towards me, then Bhavarag, this intense attachment for him was awakened within my heart. And as the days went by, day by day, that attachment was growing and growing and growing. And he came to the stage that when I meet with Sri Krishna, I forget. Am I his beloved and he is my lover? I forget this, and only the taste of the love remains. It is as if Karmadev, Cupid himself, has taken our two hearts and he has melted them together and mixed it with the vermilion and made it red, and then he has decorated the palace of the universe. So in this verse, Sri Ramananda Rai is explaining the Mahabhava of Radharani, how it has three aspects, Swasambhedya Dasha, Prakashita and Yavadashraya Driti. Swasambhita Dasha means that stage where Anurag becomes the object of its own experience. That the lover and the object of love, they forget themselves and only the taste of that love remains. Prakashita means that all the sattvic bhavs come in the stage of Sudipta, which is all eight sattvic bhavs at the same time, with their intensity increasing thousands and thousands of times over. And Yavadashraya Driti means that the ecstatic feelings that Shradharani feels, they expand from her and they touch the hearts of those who are nearby to the degree to which they have the eligibility to understand them. Just like Ramananda Rai gave the example, if an artist will paint a mansion very beautifully with red shellac, if someone will walk there, they will see and they will be struck with wonder. So similarly, when Radha and Krishna meet together, Radhika's ecstasy is so high that her sakis, and more than that, her manjaris, they feel intensely the emotions that Radhika herself is experiencing. And that is to become the maidservant of Radhika, and thereby realize oh, some part of her very highest Madhanaki Mahabhav, that is the sadhya, or the highest goal of life. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, then he became very satisfied. He said, that sadhya vastu sadan vina keho nahi pai kripa kaho karai pabara upai hey Roy Ramananda now I have heard from you about sadhya the ultimate goal of life but I know that without taking up the appropriate sadhana the appropriate practice any sadhya vastu any goal cannot be attained so kripa karo rai kahe rai pabara upai be merciful and tell to me how that goal can be attained. So Sri Ramananda Rai, he says, Gopiano Gatya Vina Aishwarya Gane Vajilera Nahipai Bajindanandane. If someone thinks that Sri Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead, they have some moods of Aishwarya or in reverence towards him, they can never attain him. There is only one method. Gopi Vina Anugatya. Unless one follows in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan, one will not be able to attain that. So Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he explained, Krishnam Smaram Janam Chasya, Krishnam Nija Samihitam. It is not enough only to meditate and remember Sri Krishna. Even Kamsa Maharaj is always thinking of Sri Krishna. The point here is that we don't want a mood like Sri Krishna. We want to attain a mood like Sri Krishna's eternal associates. So, Rama, so Rupa Goswami, he wrote, Nija Prasta Samihitam. One should remember Krishna along with that associate, after whom one aspires to follow. And he Katara Taschaso, being absorbed in hearing and chanting the Katar of those particular associates, Kuryat Vas and Brajay Sada, one should reside in Braj. And if physically one cannot reside in Braj, at least by mind, one should reside in Braj. So Sri Ramananda Rai explains the path of Ma to Mahaprabhu of Raganuga Bhakti doing sadhana bhajan. He said after a very long time of meditating upon the services of French gopis, 
gradually the realization will come. Then, Bhakta Deya Paila Pai Guna Rasmaran. When one's spiritual body manifests by the mercy of those eternal associates, then one can become absorbed in the remembrance. Guna Kristi Hoya, then Nirmala Bhajan. One's heart becomes attracted to the the qualities of Radha and Krishna, and one can engage in the near Mala Bhajan. Thank you. So he stopped his mouth. Oh, nothing more than that. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he showed his Rasaraj Mahabhav. He told Raramananda, Oh, I have a doubt. Don't anything hide from me. I first I saw a sannyasi form, and then I saw oh, Vansi Badan Krishna you, and I saw you are covered with a very Kanchan Puttalika, very golden any form, that is Radhika. And her beauty, Radhika beauty, coming through you, so you are not seeing that. Means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, caller, Radhika caller. Krishna, Color is hidden from God by cover, but not fully, like very fine cloth. It is coming. So who are you? Who are you? Then Mahaprabhu showed his Rasaraj Mahabhav. What is the Rasaraj Mahabhav? At once Rayamanan fell down and became senseless. He has seen Chaitanya Mahabhu. He has seen Radhika. He has seen Krishna. They have not he has seen. But this is special thing. At one time Rasaraj Mahabhav. Who is the Rasaraj? Krishna himself. And Mahabhav up to Madanakya Bhav, Srimati Radhika, both combined. And that is by fact, he could not tell. After that, he became very invented and he fell back on the feet of Chaitanya Mahabhav. He told, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, don't tell this to anyone, keep me secret. But I can, my heart, this desire was fulfilled. 
I heard of so many fantastic things. So now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came from him. Oh, he became Ratnaka. Now he became that. That water came from ocean. It became part of cloud. And cloud clear, pure water came in concert and became pure. So now I am satisfied. And then so many questions <coughs> answered. He was changed and Raramanan told, I want to, uh, that you should go to the end and you should be here. Then I will know something. Mahaprabhu told, I want to be with you whole life. Please give up all these worldly things. Oh, God does if I render you. And if you should come to Puri, and whole life, they will, oh, tell and hear the three past times of coming to them. Then the Rajaman and the chief, so he left everything. He gave resignation to King Pratap Rudra. But Pratap Rudra's role, I will give you same <laughs> because you are with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now hold a nine eight Gambhira to be there. Go Prema. Now drama should be.